So, let me tell you something that you should have already realized by now about this fucking show you're listening to. This shit is supposed to be for mature audiences. As in grown-ups, mentally mature. It's supposed to talk about adult subjects, an adult frame of mind. It's not fucking that at all. This is two emotionally regressed, broken half-wits pretending to offer insight on movies. All they really offer you is an endless sexual perversion and a laundry list of personal paraphilia issues. You can make your own choices in life, but you have to choose this as entertainment. You know you're better than this. You have to know you are better than listening to Cinema Psyops. consecutive week of cinema psyops i'm your host court the guy who's gonna blow out his vocal cords one of these days live on the air for you i swear and sitting all the way across the city of omaha wondering just when what's gonna happen is my co-host matt i mean i took the over under the next six months so i took the over on that so you gotta go at least six more months for my degenerate gambling addiction to take hold (laughs) yeah like you needed me Uh, the possibility of me blowing out a vocal cord to intro the show you needed that as your excuse to become a degenerate gambler that's the line that you needed that that was actually i I, for some reason i don't like betting on sports but i like betting on people (laughs) (laughs) you like betting on something that's even more hard or difficult to gauge or figure out when or may or may not happen i I don't win a lot (laughs) (laughs) the the biography of matt psyop is i don't win a lot that's, the tale of Matt be, Psyop's life. I, that should be my epithet. I didn't win a lot. 
Sure did lose often. I lost a lot. Yeah, I, I, I sure did put that in a like, in mode, but hey, whatever. I don't know. I kind of feel like we both may have lost a little bit this week. We might have lost a little bit this week. So. <laughs> uh, no, yeah. I'm not talking yeah, about we, this. We all took an L on this one. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. Uh, I'm not talking about this week's film because Ice Cream uh, Man is actually a film that I rather enjoy. Oh, okay. But not for the kind of reasons that I possibly should be enjoying it. All right. I'm just going right. to I'm just going to flat out state that right now. Everything okay. that I like about Ice Cream Man is probably everything that you dislike about it. Oh, Jesus. All right. <laughs> We've got what could possibly be with Ice Cream Man, a very horror house on Highway 5 type situation here. It is very much, I believe, could be a horror, a horror house on Highway 5. Yeah, yeah. It, I definitely feel like that may be where my enjoyment is coming from because yeah. uh, watching it again, I watched it on my projector uh, on the Blu-ray and um, I could see everything, everything. Like, all like the sh- like shit stuff huh? well, <laughs> that that should be signed or hidden like all the fakes like everything that shows everything to be fake <laughs> pretty much this was like watching a live <laughs> stage play when you're like right up on the stage and you can see the effects for what they are it's like going to a live wrestling event with two guys who are brand new to wrestling and you can hear them call out the moves <laughs> Wow, you're really bitter about this. <laughs> I will say this disc had an amazing special feature for Ice Cream Man. Now, I've had this disc forever, and I yeah. have been delaying covering it for various reasons. And uh, we finally just kind of had it to where it was collecting enough dust in the box to be covered. Because there is, there's actually a cardboard box that I just start throwing Blu-rays and discs and stuff into. Like, And, and that's, how, that's, that's how our backlog or how our year gets planned out, is I just start throwing shit into a box and then that's what we're going to cover when we get to it and very much again this is something of um of a of a famous kind of box cover for me for this movie i never saw this movie before but i don't know the box was this one of the ventriculated covers where when you would turn it it would animate was this that one because it was like no i don't jack frost i just remember yeah jack frost no it wasn't one of those i don't think yeah yeah. because it was just uh the ice cream man there uh holding a ice cream cone that has a skull instead of a scoop of ice cream. Yeah, I remembered it being like a boss relief cover too, where like the the ice cream cone was like really like accented, and then they just had Clint Howard in the background of that yeah. a little bit. Oh, <clears throat> but I yeah, this is definitely another one of those like if if you walked through a video store in 1995, you saw this VHS tape. Uh, it's yeah. the exact same thing as the Fear, and I did not plan to put these back to back for that very reason. This literally was just I grabbed it out of the box of films we need to cover, and this is just the order with which they were processed (laughs) is basically what we were covering for the most part this year there's a little bit more planning involved in some other things but like the first couple of movies is just as they got pulled out of the box because they've been sitting there forever and got moved to the top (laughs) just just because you've just been sitting there long enough in the island of misfit toys well and it's okay just to kind of pull back the curtain a little bit we were gonna do ice cream man as like a teamed up episode with someone a long long time ago somebody laid claim to it and Uh Even with my memory, I can't remember who that was or how it was going to take place or what made it to where it couldn't happen. And it got to the point where I was like, okay, I don't even remember what the plan was for this anymore. So I can't reserve it for that person. And there's a handful, Uh, there's a handful of discs that are like that. So if you are that person and you're like, why is Kurt covering this without me? It's because I completely fucking forgot our plans and I'm very sorry. I don't even remember them anymore. I'm just covering them on the show because they've been sitting around forever. (laughs) You need help finding a copy for yourself to cover it for whatever you want to do sure get a hold of me i'm sorry yeah right just uh where's the love court i just i it's been years like it feels like it's been a this this disc has been out for a very long time this was like an exclusive the vinegar syndrome did like ages ago like when we first started podcasting ago so it's been lying dormant in the box for that long and i think it's waited long enough we should just get ready and get covering ice cream man i i think so this will keep it quiet (laughs) oh hi there i didn't see you You call me Cutting a New Show. I'm Bo Ransdell, and I'm one of the many creators you can find on Legion Podcasts. I said quiet! My fellow podcasters and I work hard to bring you the best in horror podcasting, but that comes at a cost. What's that like to live deliciously? Not that, but also, yes. No, what I'm getting at is that there are server costs, costs for good microphones and software for editing, all the things that make our shows, you know, fun to listen to. And you can help. If you're enjoying the shows on legionpodcasts.com, 
or in the Legion Network available on iTunes and Stitcher, just about anywhere you can download a podcast, really, you can help us out and get a little something for your trouble at patreon.com forward slash Legion Podcasts. For just two bucks a month, you get a pair of movie commentaries exclusive to Patreon, and for five dollars, you can also join us for a monthly screening of a movie. All of that available on patreon.com forward slash Legion Podcasts. We appreciate it, and thank you for listening. Now, back to the cutting room. So if you are with us on the pirate radio edit of this episode, you are now listening to Ice Cream Man as sung by Tom that's Waits. A, that's right. That's right on there. Right on the nose there, my friend. Oh, it gets a lot more on the nose in this trailer. There are no bad days here at Wishing Well. Only happy days. Open wide, Gregory. It is a happy day. Now he's out, rehabilitated with a brand new job. Here you go. I'd like to buy a gallon of your, uh, hard pack. Next. You didn't say please. Did you see little Roger Smith today? He was at the park. Why? We got a missing kid. His ice cream has a secret ingredient. What the hell is that ice cream dork doing out this way? What's your favorite flavor? Wow. Oh, he's so kind to the little children. I brought you something special. Ooh, <laughs> sounds yummy. There's something weird going on here. Hiya, honey. <laughs> Not every day is a happy, happy, happy day. Spent the last 20 at some private clinic called Wishing Well for the Mentally Disturbed. We believe in compassion. Shut up! Going at the Wishing Well Hospital. Get some people down here quick. <laughs> No one leaves the wishing well. Doctor's orders! <laughs> Even with a head start, there's no escape. <laughs> you can run, but you can't hide from the ice cream man. Let us pray. Starring Olivia Hussey, Jan Michael Vincent, Sandal Bergman, David Naughton, David Warner, and Clint Howard as the Ice Cream Man. This is gonna be fun. That fucking cast list is a veritable who's who of B movie greatness. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I mean it's uh it's it's pretty amazing. Uh <laughs> I mean it is like the amount of characters that are all those people from other movies. You know, it, it's that guy or it's that lady. Yeah, this film is essentially one giant series of cameos. Yeah, it really is. I mean, dude, the dude from fucking American Werewolf in London. <laughs> yeah, well, let's just dig into it because there's so much to unpack about this fucking movie. Yeah, you're not wrong. Uh, okay, Ice Cream Man. We start by the first 20 minutes. How we see uh, it's like uh, must be a flashback because it's all in black and white. I assume guy's getting out of his car and he gets gunned down. And as he's laying there bleeding, the kid just picks up his push pop and starts eating it right over the dead guy's fucking body. So he's kind of all, you know, messed up and shit. Uh, <laughs> what what makes you say that? What, what do you mean? Because you don't, you wouldn't do that. You wouldn't just eat a dead man's ice cream cone over his dead body? No. That's wrong. Yeah. Yeah. It's wrong to do that. Okay. Duly God noted. Damn. You fucking asshole. All right. Yeah, we all get it, Court. You're fucked up. So anyway, uh, 
Now we're back onto the current day, and Ice Cream Man shows up. He's creepy as fuck, and uh, but Clinton Howard is is the bomb in this. Really, uh, <laughs> I don't believe he's acting. I think he just showed up and hung out on he set. Just showed up. He was like, "Hey guys, what's going on?" And everyone's like, "Oh, all right. I guess Clint Howard's in this movie now." All right, everybody, just fucking relax. I love Clint Howard. That was absolutely a joke. Yeah. He is a wonderful human being by he all does, counts. Like, yeah, every yeah by all accounts, he seems like a really cool dude. So. <laughs> Uh, but he is creepy as fuck. And we get some kids, they're buying some ice cream, and then they race up to a park, and they're talking the pied, but the story about the Pied Piper, and then there's this creepy groundskeeper who's, like, twirling them, and I'm all of a sudden like, is just everyone creepy in this movie? <laughs> just every adult is a fucking creep in this movie. Okay, we need to get a ruling at this point. Do you feel like you're watching a kid's film, or do you feel like you're watching a horror film? I feel like at this point I'm still watching a horror film. Okay. Because I, we did just watch a dude get gunned down. Alright, the reason that I ask that is because there's moments of this where it is very unbalanced into what genre of film it feels like it wants to be, and yeah. it jumps back and forth so much. I feel like like anything where the kids are interacting is trying really hard just to be a kid's film and then all of the stuff that is like involving the adults is trying really hard to be grown up material yeah. and it just it just bounces back and forth between those two tones i also feel like it's trying real hard to be um it's trying real hard to be monster squad yeah yeah okay i could see that too or like goonies or something yeah yeah yeah, uh, yeah. and it's like it's all these different elements trying to come together in the film and i don't i don't think it quite it becomes this cohesive thing. It's just like all these different veins and directions that the film's trying to take. It feels very, yeah. it feels very kind of fractured and just kind of jumps around in tone a lot with this. And uh -huh. I, I want to bring it up now because this sequence very much feels like what they were trying to do with the opening of Goonies to give you all the character development like you just described. Yeah. Like, I, I totally agree with you, and I didn't notice that until you brought it up, but I totally see it now. But then it does jump back and forth, and it tries to do that action-adventure slash kids movie thing, but then it also tries to be like this serious, hardcore, like, horror film. And uh, it wants both, but doesn't really give us either. And yeah. it, it keeps jumping back into fractions of delivering on both. And I bring it up now because it really goes for you know, or broke with that later, and it'd be better just to bring it up now and just get it over with. Yeah, right. Well, okay. I mean, the, it's okay. Well, we're we're set here with these kids. They're all kind of doing, you know, they're getting pushed uh, by this creepy fucking uh, groundskeeper uh, who was like, "Yeah, did the pipe piper lead all the kids to their death?" And they're like, oh, "No, I'm pretty sure the kids got away." And he's like, "Oh, I thought they all died." And I'm like, "Wow, man, you're just yeah, he's, really pushing it right there." Yeah, he sounds like his mood got super killed under the thought that kids may not have died yeah yeah oh man you mean those kids are still alive boo <laughs> you're like oh uh hey and that's probably a clip somehow too so um yep <laughs> those kids are still alive boo um but anyway so uh ice cream the kids go home and the ice cream man comes by and he's uh he keeps getting these visions of a needle going into his head and then a little boy interrupts him and he goes hey you know, can I uh, get some ice cream? And uh, then uh, it, when you go into the ice cream truck you see on the table, there's like this really kind of fucking Rambo-esque fucking knife, you know, combat knife that he has. So you're like, uh, uh, all right, that's. Probably didn't it say Gerber too at, at one point? Didn't it say Gerber on it? Like you could see the brand name of the. Yeah, knife? I think so. Um, I wasn't looking that closely, but uh, for for that, but it, it's possible. I mean, you get really good shots of that fucking knife, so <laughs> you're you're not exactly uh, missing out on knife shots here. Um, and I am the type to look at brands, so I'm pretty sure yeah. it was a Gerber. Yeah, you're 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 into brand name stuff. Um, I'm into knives. Yeah. Well, later on, uh, we see Ice Cream Man. He goes back to his living area where he lives, and he, there's this dog barking at him, and then he brings this knife out of a push pop and says, hey, dog, you having a bad day? And yeah, he kills the dog. Then he talks to this old lady nurse, who I guess is like his landlord, and she's like, hey, did you hear my dog? He goes, no, no, everything's fine. And she seems to like him well enough. So, Did I guess... you recognize Olivia Hussey from anything? I did not. 
Okay, she's been in quite a few films, but the one that she left the biggest impression on me was in Romeo and Juliet. She played Juliet. Uh, it was a much older version of it, but then there's also Black Christmas. She was pretty incredible in that. And then, uh, but the one that left the biggest impression on me is definitely, I think, Psycho 4, which uh, goes back in time and shows like the beginning and she played Norman's mother. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's uh, it, oof, it's a rough watch, but... Uh, yeah, not a great movie. <laughs> I mean, I don't think it's a bad film. I just, I, I think it's been unfairly maligned, but it was also kind of like a, it's a made for cable movie almost, the Psycho 4. Oh. And it very much feels like it. But we're not reviewing that film right we're now. We're not reviewing that. No, no, no. But I'm yeah. just, okay. But you should recognize, you should recognize Miss Olivia Hussey. And I just want to say this of both Olivia Hussey and Clint Howard. Um, They both can obviously tell the type of movie that they're in, but they are both acting for the fences as if this is going to be their next big break they're, yeah, they're they, both giving it their all especially when they're working together because they play off each other so well and it's just so uncomfortable to watch yeah. them because it just feels real you feel like you're really watching people with mental illness when they're working together and like it just feels uncomfortable and you're scared of them you, i agree with all of that yeah yeah that's that's pretty much it it's uh it ain't a fun time uh <laughs> and this is where it, the tone shifts to the horror movie which is why i bring it up and why i yeah. wanted to focus in on olivia hussey because it's it's a lot of like she's giving so much to clint howard and clint howard is giving so much back and they're working so well together and you just feel like something's not right here like yeah. right off the bat and this is where the horror really comes in and this is where it's the most uncomfortable and this is the stuff where it's like god this is really like it just it makes you squirm all of the stuff yeah them together oh yeah like a lot too you're just kind of like uh everything's just so uncomfortable like why does it gotta be like this um i think sorry so then uh then we see he's putting like the dog through a meat grinder and that yeah that's a fucked up movie what the yeah. fuck yeah right dog meat grinder jesus christ man fucked up no nope. bad movie it's a bad movie it's not good on you movie <laughs> you're sleeping outside tonight movie bad movie that's, yeah bad movie bad um you're in you're you're in the dog house no pun intended uh so anyway uh then we cut to one of the kids from the park gets home it's dinner time um they're all kind of talking about their day and his brother really gets on him about one of his friends whose name is tuna and he's kind of a bigger kid and uh it's uh, really fucked up big bro is kind of a bully and he wants to be a cop so you know no no surprise there he's a bully you know so he him. says a bunch of like back the blue line kind of bullshit anyway yeah. before he even starts making fun of their one friend for being a bit heavy set yeah and then like starts implying a whole bunch of other horrible shit about him just because he's heavy set and then just yeah. basically says a bunch of really horrible hate filled shit about a, a large group of people yeah. and then he just is like yeah and fucking what's with the name tuna jesus and it's like he just can't let go of the fucking name and you're kind of like all right man just settle down it's a fucking name it's not your name don't worry fucking about it okay you remember when i told you that the 90s kept trying to sell us that the mouthy douchebag was cool i think that's yeah. what they're doing here again i i think so yeah hey this guy's fucking he's edgy and it's like, nah, he's a fucking <laughs> douchebag. This is not Dennis Miller. This is just some guy yeah. being a fucking prick for the sake of being a prick. Exactly. Um... So anyway, uh, so uh, we find out that that little kid who was in the park, uh, the, he hasn't returned home yet. So it's uh, it's it's getting scary out there. Um, Ice Cream Man, well, he wakes up after sleeping outside on the dirt. I'm pretty sure he buried the dog out there. and uh, he, But he has dreams right before he wakes up of this nurse lady, just younger, and like, you know, and they're lobotomizing him or injecting him with something it's it's not good dreams that's for sure but she's always bringing him ice cream so she gives him an ice cream after they stuck a needle into his brain and inject him with reanimator fluid yeah yeah it's reanimator fluid <laughs> fuck yeah whatever's going on to young clint howard that the nurse is involved with who is now like taking care of him as an adult yeah all of this is bad everything here is a bunch of warning signals that should have everyone feeling upset and a little worried yeah you feel Feel kind of bad right now for ice cream man even if he is a murderer right now it's like uh, he might not have a choice you know i'm not saying he should have done it i'm just saying i kind of understand right I now. i understand yeah i'm not saying i agree with it just saying i understand yeah i'm not i'm not saying that like i condone his actions i just kind of see where they're coming from yeah so anyway the kids then they're all wandering around they visit tuna's dad who's the guy from 
uh, American Werewolf in London. So, I mean, there you go. There's a nice little, you, you know, person who you I've had seven see. dicks inside of me. Yeah, that. thank you. Yes, that's uh, that was that show, wasn't it? Yep. <sighs> I've had seven dicks inside of me. I really hate you, Court. So, anyway. Uh, <laughs> Still miss me in studio? No. Nope. Anyway, <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> Um, uh, all that went away. Uh, so anyway, uh, the dad actually gets a call from his mistress, who he pretends it's his mom, and shoes the kids off. Um, so, uh, then the cops stop, and they ask, uh... I, uh, ice cream man if he's uh you know uh, if he's seen a kid around any of that and the ice cream man's like no I I haven't I, I haven't seen anybody and uh so they're like well we're looking for this kid he goes well do you have any leads you know trying to find out if there are any leads going on and they said that's classified but he gets some ice cream uh, the detectives do and he like cuts out an eyeball uh because now we see inside there there's just a whole ton of people uh you know, a whole ton of body parts in there. And so he uses some of them. Uh, exp- he cuts out an eyeball and then gives uh, the Rocky Roll uh, ice cream to one of the detectives who then, of course, is like, hey, chewing on, you know, disgusting eyeball ice cream. So this is where this is that's where the gross. This is where the film tries to straddle the kids film and horror and yeah. do both. And it kind of fails on it, but yeah. not in a terrible way, in a way where it's like, this is the most ridiculous idiotic thing i've ever seen in my life and would you stop showing me the eyeball and then because it doesn't stop you just start chuckling at it yeah and then you're laughing as it intended you to do all along anyway because it just held on it until it broke down the barriers that's all that it did to me (laughs) and i just like i I was just chuckling because i'm like oh my god you guys are really going for this and it wasn't because i thought it was brilliant and i thought it was actually funny just because like they were really driving it home to me but they still won and still made me laugh Matt. yeah yeah i mean it, yeah you see the eyeball in his fucking ice creamed mouth and you're like "Ugh, jesus <laughs> christ can we just stop right like i, actually, I wasn't grossed out by the eyeball in his mouth i was grossed out by i, I hate seeing people eating <laughs> well yeah that was fucking gross too and they really go out of their way trying to make all of the food all gloppy and gross and like like a kid's film would do like you know where you say i don't know and you get slimed all of a sudden yeah you know yeah like there's always fucking ice cream dripping off of everything all over people and there's just messes everywhere and it's just trying to make you feel uncomfortable and grossed out but like in a kids film kind of way yeah and and then it puts in the stuff that's like actually grotesque and actually gross like you know body parts being turned into rocky road chunks that someone then chews on for an excessive amount of time a dog being put into a fucking wood or a meat grinder yeah to be turned into like and and that's another thing that this film this film like points out or tries to say that he's grinding up animals and people and turning them into ice cream somehow and i don't and like i don't they haven't i don't i don't see the math in that and i don't understand it but that's what it's been heavily implying thus far is that his ice cream is actually ground up people yeah yeah that's or or at least parts of it like are there's people like little there's ice cream and then bits of people in it Right, but it doesn't I, yeah. do it doesn't do a good job of developing that. It just heavily implies it, and then you just have to buy into it. Yeah, and that's also very true. And it's just like, all right, well, but I don't buy into it. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> right, and we're a little bit into Monster Squad here, where we're seeing the monster action and what the monsters are doing. You know, with yeah. with that bit of the stuff, and it's just like we said, it's all over the place in tone. It tries to be like super serious and gross, and try and be grotesque, and then it does it in this wacky, weird way with the eyeball being passed around and, and like held on forever and you just you can't draw a beat on the film and you kind of find it frustrating but Clint Howard never stops being entertaining in it and like I think he's kind of holding it together for me because I just can't stop watching him yeah his his acting is over the top but it's like you get a feeling like it should be he feels you know? he feels like that kind of foam that expands to fill a gap and make sure that it, it he's like filling in the spots that are everywhere else that's left behind in yeah. the film like with what he's doing like it feels like he is going far enough out to just kind of be the adhesive bits that are holding this together and just filling in those gaps that just feels like what he's doing to me anyway yeah i get that definitely yeah so then we get a bunch of kids are lined up they want to get some fucking ice cream and shit like that and the mistress actually comes up and requests an ice cream delivery from him and it seems like she is coming on to him oh she is she's just she's she's just wanting some ice cream man dick 
She is and, apparently very voracious and wants to try a little of every flavor in town, if you catch my drift. Yes, and that is actually it for the first 20 minutes, finally. <laughs> All right, we pretty much said everything we needed to say about this film because, like, you kind of have to get the parts out that we got out when we got out. Um, yeah. The, t- the tone shifts don't really change. I mean, they just keep getting bigger swings and spending more time in the various parts of the tone. So I don't think we really need to focus on that as much. Is there anything else that you need to talk about for that first 20? No, definitely not. I'm good with just going if you are. All right. So we start the next uh, 20 minutes. Uh, Ice Cream Man, he um, stops at that lady's place. And as he's looking at her house, he has a flashback to the hospital stay and and the doctor saying, we're only happy here. We're only happy here. And then it ejects more green stuff into his head. And that kind of snaps him out of his daydream. And he just drives away from the mistress's house. Uh, we see the kids are walking home. And her the girl goes inside her house. She goes, I'm just going in alone. And uh, we see her mom is all kind of fucked up. And like like it almost seems like she's having really a seizure and her dad says like oh you have to come here because like the angel gabriel is talking through your mom again it's like okay so dad's a uh, dad's fucked up so <laughs> i believe they're called pentecostals right like the ones that speak in tongues yeah and have archangels speak through them i think that's pentecostal right yeah i think so yeah it's but, a special uh, level of fucking crazy i promise you no pentecostal will ever listen to our fucking show so i can say yeah. that they're a special level say of that crazy. we're like fuck it who cares yeah uh, <laughs> they're a special level of crazy yeah no oh, i i could i can tell it well the young kids they talk and that's our first clip has been acting a lot weirder around her mom lately well her father being a minister all the more they just talk about god oh but that's not it it's just i don't know she's just acting weird anybody for ice cream uh we just had ice cream can you ever have too much ice cream possible. Nah, I gotta get home. My mom's gonna kill me. Come to my house with small paw on me. I gotta get home. Tuna? Uh, my mom sort of gets mad about all the ice cream I spill on my shirts. Last one there is a string of squid knot. What? Now small paw's trying to pin the rotten egg on me. <laughs> I'll see if I ever invite you to my birthday party. What? I didn't do anything. Well, well, uh, what do we have here? Want some ice cream? Um, uh, maybe not. It's too close to dinner. Ah, come on. What's your favorite flavor? Oh, no, wait, wait, let me guess. Let me guess. I don't, don't say anything. I, um, uh, it's, uh, I can taste it. Uh, Butter brickle. How would you know that? Because it's my favorite flavor, too. Wow. You like my ice cream truck? Yeah. I never saw the insides before. You know, it's hard to make friends when you're always stuck on the inside. I know. I had to stay inside a lot when I was little. I was really sick. That's why I'm so small. You know, I was sick too when I was little. But I'm better now. Here you go. Wow. I don't think I have enough money for that. My treat. Uh, at this point, a bloody spear falls out. Yeah, it's the garbage uh, spike yeah. thing that's yeah. covered in blood. He probably used it to kill the garbage man who was apparently doing community service for being a pedophile and like doing it in the part of the park that kids play in. Yeah, it seems like that. <laughs> <laughs> something's not right about a whole lot of that shit. Yeah, something's not right about a lot of this fucking movie. Yeah, the stuff here with Clint Howard, uh, they're really trying to play the ice cream man to be a little bit more innocent and friendly, and you kind of are supposed to almost, like, it feels like you're trying, they're trying to make you feel sorry for him and, like, get sort of on his side or something. It's really bizarre. Yeah. Kind of hard to watch. It really is. <laughs> sorry. 
All right, so then we see Tuna comes running up because, of course, he lags behind. He's a bit chunkier. And he sees uh, the uh, the uh, ice cream man dragging Paul. He knocked out Paul into the back of the truck. Well, the ice cream man sees him, even though he tries to hide. He says, hey, you know, your friend got hurt and blah. And he goes, hey, you know, come on. You want some free ice cream, any of that? Well, Tuna runs away. Well, ice cream man kind of yells at him, you know, telling him he knows where he lives. and He'll kill his parents and all that kind of shit. Um, then Tuna hides hides in some trees and who does he find but the kid who's been missing kid says he saw that the ice cream man kill the 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 worker in the park and he's been just hiding out for the past two days tuna says he'll walk the kid back to his house take back uh, yards and go to his house and that his dad will know what to do well tuna gets home and he takes his has to take his shoes off outside well anyway he gets home and we see that uh well tuna's parents are just yelling and not wanting to listen to him they're yelling at each other because uh uh, the mom thinks dad's cheating he is but you know she's just she keeps bringing up oh well you weren't in the office blah 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 so the next day tuna's mom is taking him to the store and his shoes have ice cream all over them and uh worms so gross and and, and message <laughs> yeah the ice cream man is threatening him for sure yeah oh yeah so uh well they go to the store he and his mom and at the store uh the you know uh uh, Tuna's getting stuff out of the cooler and all of a sudden he looks and right next to him is Ice Cream Man and he chases him. Uh, and we have a little chase scene in here but Tuna is able to get away and hide and, uh, after after he gets out of there and he hides, uh, his they find him in a meat cooler. And so his mom comes to him and he pretty much tells his mom what happened. So this leads to the cops searching Ice Cream Man's place, which is actually was an ice cream parlor owned and operated by the ice cream man who was shot. And we see a on the board a newspaper article about that ice cream man. He was shot because of drugs. So he must have not just was not just an ice cream man. You know what I mean? He must have been doing some other stuff. Yeah, he was mobbed up in some way, shape, or form. He wasn't just selling ice cream. Yeah. Well, anyway, the cops kind of tear the place apart, and they go and back and where he makes stuff and tear places apart, but they don't really find any, anything. They're using and... the warrant as an excuse to destroy his place of business. Yeah, That's all it, really it is. It's, it's an intimidation tactic that they pulled. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm surprised they didn't try to throw any civil forfeiture in there and, you know, just, just take, take any stuff. kind of cash at him. Yeah, yeah. just take stuff, because, you know... That's they do that. So uh, they uh, get in there and uh, they finally they don't find anything. So they leave. Well, they weren't they didn't even do a good job of looking for anything because the little compartment back in his cooler leads to a storage room where Paul is. Well, he brings Paul out and he says, actually, I'm not going to hurt you at all. And he gives him some ice cream. So he's not going to apparently, he doesn't want to hurt Paul. He's in fact giving him ice cream and that ends that 20 minutes. Can we talk about how he scoops the ice cream up off the floor for the kid? Like it's no big deal yep. that it's on the floor. Yeah, I, I know. That was uh, <laughs> The ice cream seeds kind of just growed me out because a lot of it's him pal just palming ice cream instead of using a scooper. Yeah. Yeah, he's palming ice cream. He's stuffing things in there with his fingers. And it's just, it's it's made to make you grossed out. And it's supposed yeah. to be like, for a kid's movie, it's supposed to make you sick, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's just gross. <laughs> it is. Um, the, the tone's bouncing around everywhere again. Um, so now the guy's like a kidnapped a kid. And he's turning yeah. the kid slowly into him by feeding him ice cream and showing him his secrets and trying to train him up because, like, the kid was nice to him, I guess. I don't... Yeah, something. <laughs> I don't or, or or something about the kid reminds him because the kid was sick and didn't I get to go out a lot. So maybe, yeah, I, yeah, something like that. I, <laughs> I, I I really have no idea exactly why the characters are doing the things that they're doing. I understand the story, like I get it, like he took the kid, yeah, but like the motivation is just not clear to me. And I don't understand any character's motivation in this movie. <laughs> right, like I, you could you could have told me literally anything was the reason why he took the kid i just thought that like the kid was just there and he just snatched him up and now he needs a friend you know like that's like I, yeah it's as good an explanation as anything else that we've gotten in this film other than we're just padding out the runtime with having him hang out with a kid instead of killing him yeah which is a pretty short runtime anyway i mean this is only an hour and 25 minute movie <laughs> right it's just it's moving along but at the same time it like just really indulges in these kinds of scenes and yeah. it's at this point where the film can't decide if the ice cream man is a good guy who just got 
got pushed too far in some of the killing that he's doing, or he's a bad yeah. man who is in fact going to do bad things. And it's jumping back and forth, even all the stuff with him showing the kid the ropes, which we're about to see in the next 20 minutes. Yes. Well, um, so we start the next 20 minutes. The kids are at church. Uh, the girl's dad, who's the preacher, he even has the fucking red circles on his palms to, you know, for the stations of the cross. You know, like he got nailed to the cross himself. And you're like, wow, dude, you are fucking crazy. And this is way too many people in this town to be at this church. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah. Well, them uh, Pentecostal types are real scary. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So um, the kids, uh, they, they talk to him. Uh, they talked to one kid who was missing, who was missing, and they found him. He's like, yeah, I'm grounded for a few weeks. And then they, uh, the other three who are in this group, they get together, and that uh, is our next clip. But how could they let him go? All I know is I'm not letting him get us. All the grown-ups worry about their stupid problems. What we need to do is catch him on film. Since when do kids go trailing murderers? We're just kids. We'll get killed. Just like Small Paul. Look, Tuna, I know you've been through a lot more than we have, but we got to do something. Why? Why is it up to us? Why can't we just stay in our backyards and just keep away from them? Because we're the Rocketeers and we stick together. We are doing this. The three of us. We'll need a camera. We can take a picture of him and give it to the police. Hang on, I think I can get one. And here's where it turns into Monster Squad. So pop yeah. until you drop. Yeah, right. Dance Except until your don't... feet fall off. <laughs> we don't get a montage, though. Uh, now they're just out there, and they're looking for him. Uh, the Ice Cream Man. They all have little little rockets on their bikes and shit like that. They're bopping until they... they drop. <laughs> and they find him. They actually find him. That's because and... they danced until their feet fell off. The, is, it, is that why? It's yes. But we didn't get a montage. There was no <laughs> montage for us. <laughs> they can do it without a montage, because that cost money man oh man but montages are so good uh <laughs> are so they anyway though? um so uh, uh so anyway they follow him to a grave site and he's actually sits there talking to the gravesite of the old ice cream man and he's talking to him like he's there and then like even looking at other gravestones saying hey will you stop interrupting or stop listening I'm trying to talk to someone here and keeps bringing him like special ice cream cones and shit like that for his party he keeps saying there's so many people at this party yeah it's really so. bizarre and a bit unnerving and it gives you even more depth into the mental depravity that's going on behind Clint Howard's character's eyes and again Clint is selling it enough to where he's what is actually making it unsettling because it's a ludicrous fucking scene. And if, yes. it, if it weren't for Clint Howard delivering the dialogue the way that he was, you would just laugh this off the fucking screen. And yeah. he's the one that actually makes it uncomfortable and feel more believable and real. Yeah. Yeah, he does. And, um, uh, so anyway, then he once again stops at that mistress's house. Uh, and so one of the kids, she actually says, you know, Tuna, they, Tuna got left behind because, of course, he can't bike as fast. So she says, go back. She tells the one kid, go get Tuna. I'm going to go take pictures in there. So she does. And the other kid gets back there. You know, he gets Tuna. And there, Tuna finds out that they left her, you know, in that truck. So they start going. And then because Tuna freaks out so much, he fires a rocket right at the cop car so uh the cops kind of have the kids in the back and they're saying listen you know they're gonna kill our friend they're gonna kill our friend so they do a wellness check at her home and her dad goes up and checks on her and sure enough she appears to be fast asleep in bed she just got back in time so at least she got out of there you could still see the eye makeup just underneath her eyes and the yeah. father just happened to miss it because he was just checking to make sure she was there yeah but you could tell um, the next day she gets the film developed in a weird ass scene that i, I think was supposed to be funny but just it missed it <laughs> Missed, missed it. Yeah, missed it bad. I I don't understand like the they were arguing costs and things like that. It just yeah. I think it was supposed to be comedy and it was supposed to be like a kids movie style comedy. Yeah, you know because like even the guy who was working the counter is supposed to be looking goofy and being dorky yeah. at her and shit. And it just doesn't. I don't know. It just it's another thing that just misses the mark. It doesn't know what the fuck it's trying to do. And yeah. it's just another uneven tone thing that happens in this film that kind of just leaves you a bit off center with it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 
right? It just, again, it's something that just, something they tried that just missed a mark completely. It didn't do what it was supposed to do. Instead of being funny, I sat there going, is this supposed to be anything having to do with the movie? Because I'm not seeing it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we have that whole Monster Squad taking photos of the monsters or yeah. proof thing or whatever it was that they were trying to do. But they ended up just snapping a photo of the sister next door nude. Yeah. Which is kind of what Rudy was trying to do the entire time, which was absolutely wrong. Yeah. And then they find a way to work that same plot line into what they're doing here. So when you said the Monster Squad shit, I cannot argue that is not the case at all. Because yeah, you definitely have those moments that feel like they very much wanted to be like Monster Squad here. Yeah, they really did. They they really wanted to be Monster Squad. So then the next day, also, we see two cops who are kind of trailing, like uniformed officers. They're trailing uh, uh, Ice Cream Man. Well, he wakes them up with ice cream cones because they're asleep in their car. Uh, we cut back to the kids are back in a group and they're talking and that's our next clip. It's like the Pied Piper and the evil. What? Well, he drives around in his truck tempting all the kids and they follow him. And slowly, he gets rid of them like rats. <laughs> Another... Lovely. We only need ten dollars worth of quarters, and we can pick up the film. I think we got it. Johnny! Yeah? What the hell are you doing with my camera? Where's the film? Start with you. Where's the film? Let's go. Come on. I got it. Let's go. And the reveal that we're about to find out is exactly what I was referencing as to how they did their Monster Squad copy here. But again, um, so uh, this uh, almost adult guy starts to uh, bully his brother's friend to find out why his brother took his film for the camera. And it's like, holy shit, man. Will you just sell it down? (laughs) Well, you understand later why he's so upset at them. Yeah, but why would you? Why would you go after your brother? Yeah, I. But you you figure it out very quickly as to why yeah. he's getting this crazy. But yes, it seems rather excessive and intense at this moment. Yes. So uh, anyway, um, Ice Cream Man he goes to the mistress, mistress's place. Um, and we see Tuna's dad coming out, and he goes to look at the back of the ice cream truck, and he gets burned by a waffle maker in his face. By Ice Cream and, Man, because there's a cut that shows yeah. him holding the off waffle iron all yes. heated up. And then he, uh, the Ice Cream Man goes up, and he says, hey, I got a special delivery, and she's all wanting to jump his bones, until she turns around, and he's holding a gigantic cone with Tuna's dad's head on it, decapitated dead uh, head on it. She screams. Best effect he, in the movie was David Naughton's severed head in the ice cream cone. Yes. And he, she screams, he kills her. Uh, we cut to the two cops. Uh, they're talking about uh, why he's creepy. They start wanting to concentrate on the nurse some more because she's also fucking weird. Um... And then we see the brother and his girlfriend go to get the pictures that are being developed, and you see why they're so pissed. They like show them in uh in 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 in, in sexual positions. Mid Congress, if you yeah. will. Mid sexual congress. They were definitely mid coitus. And uh but then the pictures of the back of the ice cream truck show up and the girlfriend just starts screaming her head off because yeah, you would seeing that kind of stuff. That's the end of that 20 minutes, and we'll be going into the final 25. Yeah, let's just wrap her up. Let's wrap her up. All right. I didn't know if you want to talk about the head some more, because I thought that was actually halfway decent. Yeah. I mean, it is definitely- That one the, got me. It was the best effect so far, and it yeah. looked- I, I don't- They must have gotten um, the mold from, like, Rick Baker or something along those lines, or maybe Naughton had a mold of his own head, because it looked almost exactly like a younger version of him as a severed head. Did you yeah. notice that? Yeah, yeah. Yes, exactly. yeah, so I did. Yeah. yeah. I don't it know- looked- like him going through mid werewolf transformation (laughs) maybe uh and you know the the burns the fake burns on the face of the actual severed head were just subtle enough to where if you were looking you could tell they were there but they they fade into the background and the giant waffle cone is just ridiculous but like once once you get to the point where you're okay with him murdering someone by burning their face with a waffle cone 
Baker, yeah. which is not going to kill anyone. It's going to very much piss them off. It may incapacitate them enough to where you can kill them another way, but it definitely is not going to kill them. Yeah, exactly. And that's it's, we're led to believe that that is all he did to him, and that killed him. That's hilarious. Um, <laughs> right. The film is just so over the top and so ridiculous and so much like a child's frame of mind on how things work. Yeah, maybe this movies. was written by a kid. Like, you know? <laughs> well, that's that's just it. It wants so desperately to be a kid's movie, but it says so much grotesque, uh, gross out humor and a bunch of other dark themes to it that just pull it away from that into horror. And it yeah. just it can't keep a foot in either grave. It really can't. Yeah, it doesn't know quite what it wants to be. And then when it tries to figure it out, it misses it completely. (laughs) (laughs) Meanwhile, the entire time I'm entertained by it, just skating from foot to foot, trying to figure out what it wants to do. Yeah. It is kind of fun. It's like when you see someone and it's like wintertime and it's outside and everything's real icy and slippery after an ice storm and you're inside your house nice and cozy, but you see somebody walking down the sidewalk and then they like do that like constant slip and slide where they almost fall, but then they don't, but then they try to regain balance and they don't and you're just sitting there entertained as fuck by it. That's it. (laughs) And at one point they actually got a hand on the ground to try and like hold still and they're still like slipping and sliding everywhere. And, and you just like, can't this, stop staring. Yeah, this is amazing. This is the greatest thing that's ever happened. Yeah, that's um, that's the that's the story through line of this film. That's us yeah. watching it going, wait, what? Yeah, hold on. What's going on? Is he still? This is great. <laughs> <laughs> we think it's going one direction and then it falls and slides into another on us. Yeah, exactly. Oh, the final 25 minutes. Let's go. <laughs> uh, so... Uh, we cut to uh, Ice Cream Man and Paul. Uh, they're making ice cream together. He's kind of explaining the process for it. Um, and then uh, Ice Cream Man kind of goes in, like, a, a bunch of stuff got caught in a filter. And a bunch of its rings, uh, the mistress's diaphragm. Yeah. So, I mean, okay. Um, okay, how is, what is he making that it's dissolving everything else about the people, including fillings and things like that. But it's not catching diaphragms and it's not catching wedding bands. And, you know, like, how is uh, how is he dissolving, like, bones and, like, teeth fillings and things? Why are there not fillings and stuff in there, right? Yeah, I, I, I have no idea what he's making. And I don't <laughs> know, like, what he's using. And it's not really explained. Yeah, so we're just supposed to accept the fairy tale logic of because evil. Yeah, pretty much. Yes. <laughs> All just because. Right. Okay, <laughs> let's just finish her off then. That's, I, that's, I'll accept I mean, it. But, I mean, it is weird. <laughs> uh, so, uh, let's see. The kids, then we cut to the kids. They're wondering if the brother brother has developed the pics or seen the pics yet uh then we cut to the cops are checking out a psychiatric clinic and that is our final clip things aren't the same as they used to be around here more patients have died and some pockets dried up hmm. of course when you die you'll dry up <laughs> why all the plastic flowers because real ones die we want happy patients So do you do uh, shock therapy, lobotomies, like that cuckoo movie? (sighs) We believe in keeping our patients happy. We believe in compassion. Shut up! You remember a nurse warden? (laughs) Do I? (laughs) Hell, everybody did. What was it that everybody liked so much about nurse warden? She gave everybody ice cream when the pain and the loneliness came. She cared for the patient. Gregory was her favorite. Gregory? Mm. Gregory Tudor? Oh, God, do something! Anthony's getting out of hand. I must ask you two to leave. This is not a happy day! I'm getting some heavy Nightmare on Elm Street 6 Freddy's Dead kind of vibes here. Yeah, right? No shit. Um, well, the detectives follow this doctor, and we see it's this clinic's in disarray, and it's pretty much being run by the inmates. Uh, the cops go throughout the whole entire fucking hospital. There's All the inmates are loose, and they're all just wandering around fighting each other. I think the facility was just shut down, but none of them left. Yeah. Um, they're able to 
barely escape. They get into some fights, but they but they are able to get out. God, this and, lasted forever. What a fucking waste of runtime that was. Yeah. Oh my god, it took forever and, and for no payoff. Yeah. Like it would have been something if like all the inmates like killed the two detectives and fucked them up or something like that. But I mean, it really was nothing. It did got you got nothing out of it. No, it would have worked better if you were in a haunted house and they were chasing you like that and making you feel uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, just, I don't know, man. Yeah. Just, it it was uh bizarre and took way too long and just ate up way too much runtime. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Um uh so uh then uh we cut to Tuna's just riding his bike one night, and he gets nabbed by the ice cream man. Uh, picks him right out of there and gets him. Um, the other two kids, uh, realizing what's happened, they go to their big bro uh, for some help. And he decides, well, he wants to be, play hero. He's got a gun, and he wants to do this. So he drives over to the ice cream man's place. Uh, we cut to the cops decide to send guys to uh, not just the clinic, but to ice cream man's place just to sit there and get ready for the warrant. Uh, so anyway, the big bro, he goes inside, tells everyone to wait in the car. Uh, he goes in there, he kind of investigates the place, it's creepy and shit. Then uh, outside while they're waiting, uh, the girlfriend's like, I hope he comes out quick. And we see someone wearing boyfriend stuff, but it's obviously Ice Cream Man because of the way he's walking. He jams something up into her, like throat into her mouth yeah it looked uh, like some kind of an her. auger thing yeah yeah uh, uh you know killing her so killing her and the kids uh, run off uh during the chase uh we get kind of a cool thing uh they go to a cop car open it up and they find two headless bodies in it um they uh then the uh ice cream head does a ventriloquist show with the with the bodies or with the heads of the cops and actually chases them with it so it's kind of really weird <laughs> okay that that ventrilo that severed head ventriloquism show yeah even though it's the possibly dumbest idea that you could ever have someone do again yeah. clint howard sells it so well and performs it so well that it is so disturbing and so not right and yeah it just like and the way the way they move is really great i yeah. love it it's fun yeah he's the one actually puppeteering him and he does such yeah. a great job with it like again i i'm telling you like this film would fail so miserably if if it weren't oh, for Clint were, Howard. If we're not for Clint Howard, this film does not do, at least, at least it doesn't have this kind of almost endearment. I don't know. It's, he's charming. He's so fucking yeah. charming as this yeah. creepy weirdo in yeah. this, especially in this sequence. Like I am enjoying, like this is the part of the film that keeps me wanting to come back to it. This shit is awesome. This stuff with him and the two severed heads is some of the greatest weird fucking cinema I've seen in a long time. It's yeah. just he, so out there. He even talks to him like they're actually still alive. Yeah. He's like, what are you guys doing? Yeah. What are you looking at? And he makes them answer back and like, yeah. is like actually like pretending like they're still alive and shit. And it's really bizarre and just yeah. really well done. And again, like if you no, no, it has to be Clint Howard. No other actor, I don't think, could have pulled it off and made it this weird and charming all at once. Yeah, no, couldn't have. Yeah, you're you're exactly right. That, that that makes this so weird yet work. Yeah, Clint Howard just he has this aura about him that makes this work. <laughs> yeah, so. it, it, he was destined to do this exact sequence for us to talk about one day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. He definitely was. Um. So, uh, let's see here. Um, then, as he's running through chasing the kids, the nurse comes out, what's this racket? And he goes, oh, I'm playing, I'm playing, uh, hide and seek with the, with the kids in the neighborhood. And she thinks that's all nice and stuff, being so sweet. Well, then we see Tuna's actually, he gets out of the ice chest that, from the ice cream truck, and he's gonna try to escape, but, uh, the, um... Uh, ice cream man grabs him. Then we cut to the two detectives. They decide to say, fuck the warrant because they hear more kids are missing and they go in to check it out. They find ice cream man holding tuna hostage. Uh, and as they're, you know, when he disappears in the truck and everything, they're looking around. Then all of a sudden ice cream man jumps him from behind and knocks him out. And then right when it looks like Tuna's getting ready to bite it. Paul comes out and he lures him, the ice cream man, in there by holding the picture of the original ice cream man and telling him to follow him. As he's following him, he has flashbacks of the hospitals, you know, kind of like the shit that he went through, getting injected, how the original ice cream man would come in and give ice cream and that guy was kind of fucked up and just, like, just a fucked up environment. As he uh, comes in there, brings stuff in, uh, Ice Cream Man gets pushed into the mixer where, you know, has sharp 
cutters and he is pushed in there and killed uh and uh you know the day is saying <laughs> we cut to then the the uh, kids all meet up and the kid who was missing at the beginning he gets included into the group now we see tuna's lost a lot of weight everyone's happy but we don't see paul and they ask where's paul and he goes therapy and then we cut to paul sitting there all dressed like an ice cream man stirring and making ice cream and he smiles and roll credits And again, a very dark, very bleak ending for something that is supposed to be like, you know, flight in tone for a kid's film, but um, just about the right amount of darkness for an actual horror film where, you know, this kid spent how long with the guy? Of course, you know, this would probably be the ultimate result, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> and, and the only reason they got out of it, or the only reason he saved his friends is because he you know, remembers his friends. And is it just me or the moment Clint Howard's out of the film, all of this stuff seems so over the top or ridiculous and you're like, ooh. Ooh, this is not good. Oh, yeah. It definitely is just bad. Way bad. <laughs> Especially the stuff with the kid dressed up like the ice cream man. That was, like, really bad, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That was just, <laughs> and you smiled, and you're kind of like, all right, sell it down. <laughs> yeah, right, like, I'm just, like, fucking chuckling right now. <laughs> over actor. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this film goes so far over the top and just so far out there and just comes up with all these different disparaging, weird ideas and just, like, just fractured timelines and it's just so bizarre and so hard to follow that that alone becomes its own entertaining thing because i'm so flabbergasted by it on a yeah. constant basis that i even forgive it that it made me watch these guys run through a supposed asylum which was just an abandoned building with people coming out of various rooms for like ever and ever. yeah right <laughs> jesus christ this film is just so out there and weird and you just kind of have to endure it right <laughs> Yeah, it pretty much is. Yeah, you just, you have to endure it just to get through to it. But, like, there's so many things, like, you never really explained what they were injecting him with. They never explained why he was in that. I mean, nothing gets explained. You you know, you're just watching it. I was thinking he's the kid that watched the, the guy get shot, right? He probably is, but the, I, I don't know. Why was he? But everything else is, like, the nurse and all that. Just none of it made any sense. <laughs> right. <laughs> and it's not like last week's movie with the fear when they were going for this very surrealistic trippy yeah. kind of like you can't follow it kind of vibe no this film just has no idea what story it's telling you it's all over yeah. the place it really is and every every time it goes into this different tangent or this like alternate timeline of how this ice cream man could have been created you know like it just goes on this other rant about it and you're like yeah uh, okay whatever and then the next thing you know he's feeding a cop an eyeball yeah right <laughs> and you're just like make up your fucking mind movie you're confusing me oh yeah this movie just really i'm like come on what are you doing to me movie <laughs> and I think that's where the real horror lies is you're so perplexed and just kind of frustrated with film that by yeah. the time it's ready to stop you just are kind of like it, it it just ends and then you're just like wait what what did i just watch what what, what, what are we doing here <laughs> Yeah, it's just, it's, there's so many moments of it that I really, really like. And especially all the stuff that's Olivia Hussey acting against Clint Howard and vice versa. I mean, that stuff is really, really well done. There's some moments when he's teaching the kids some stuff where it feels like this weird, demented Willy Wonka kind of shit, you know? Yeah. And like that kind of works. And then the stuff with the kids going on their adventure and being like the monster squad, but with like Captain Rockets or whatever the fuck they're doing. Like, uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. The, the Rocketeers, man. Yeah, right. The Rock of who? The Rocketeers. <laughs> I'm just quoting the Rocketeer and what Jennifer Connelly says when Oh yeah. The he Rock says that I'm the Rocketeer. She goes on the Rock of who? Anyway, yeah. I don't know. Like I I don't know what I feel about this film other than like this is totally a group watch because everybody could be perplexed together. Yeah. Um, you know, I highly recommend it comes with the Blu-ray that I got my hands on, which is like apparently like super out of print now. But oh, uh, wow. the episode of Monster Vision that this aired on where uh joe bob actually talks with uh, clint howard and stuff about ice cream man that that's oh, yeah. included on the disc as well so i'll probably watch that sometime later on in life and really enjoy it <laughs> yeah <laughs> later on in life <laughs> yeah but it's you know it's it's a weird film it has no idea what it really wants to do but it's worth the watch for what clint howard does with what he's given and like he saves it because there's there's no other reason to watch it other than clint howard and all the people interacting with him i mean this yeah. Is totally it's, it's, his baby. It would be fun in a group to, you know, something you could 
poke fun at it a little bit, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, where you could just like everybody just bemoan how they were still running through the asylum like 10 yeah. minutes later, you know, and the, then like talk no about something else. kills somebody here, I'm going to be really disappointed. And then you leave really disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, yeah, it, I think it would definitely help for like a group watch kind of thing. And I think um, if you're just throwing it in like on the back, like, you know, just throw it on in the background while you're doing something else. And then you look up, you know, yeah. on the scenes that, you know, the good stuff is going to happen with the gross out effects because the gross out effects are good. This, yeah. Like, I'm not going to lie. I was getting ready to, I had a keto pizza. I was going to go downstairs and eat it while I was going to watch Ice Cream Man. And I said to my wife, I'm like, I remember this movie being really gross. I don't know if this is such a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, w- it wouldn't be a good idea to eat. No. <laughs> It's not as bad as like the dentist, like the Corbin Burnson back the dentist. Like you remember when like horror movies got like direct to video horror movies got like really nasty at yeah, this really time grody. in the nineties. Yeah. Yeah. Like and I remember the dentist and the dentist too being like that. Like where they're like really, really nasty because they were direct to video. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, enough like it trips back to the nineteen nineties. We're gonna be doing something different next week. I I'm positive. <laughs> yeah. Are you positive? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm really sure. I I guess we should probably yeah, let's Let's, let's do some fucking news this week because we're yeah we, got we haven't really done news episode. in a long time all right so we're gonna take the break to make that happen here we go here's the music sings that awesome old school blues song about being an ice cream man but that fucking kicked ass yeah that that's really cool <laughs> much cooler than anything we're gonna have to offer in Zion Let's see here. All right, here we go. This one's from back in May. All right. Completely naked Minnesota woman arrested for masturbating in someone else's car. This is uh, to us from Dan. Here come from my love of dead kids. I can barely hear that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, it was super loud like a second ago and blowing everybody's eardrums out. Go ahead. Yeah. All right. Completely naked Minnesota woman arrested for masturbating in someone else's car. A naked Minnesota woman was arrested last week after authorities found her pleasuring herself in a pickup truck. Jennifer Dort Weber, 35, was completely naked when a patrol and found her lying on the floor of an open gold Pontiac SUV. I spilled pee all over the place, but I cleaned <coughs> it up. I don't know what they got a problem with. She was, in, in this put in quotes, digitally penetrating herself, according to a statement of probable cause obtained Wednesday by the smoking gun. I'm going to shove the uh, porno magazine down your throat. Weber has been released from jail in Blue Earth County after she was booked for several misdemeanors. You can't pay exposure, a bail? Well, I can probably fix that for a blowy. Narcotics possession, DWI, and entering a vehicle without the owner's permission. Mission, according to the outlet, the Shoot document the noted all over this dog. <laughs> a document, the document noted the woman who was in detox when the document was filed was making nonsensical comments and appeared to be talking to people that were not present. It continued to masturbate while communicating with authorities. Pulling it just to pull it. She was. She was just pulling it just to pull it. Um. Neither pants nor underwear belonging to Weber were found in the car, but a metal spoon identified as a potential drug paraphernalia was. Hey, bro, according to the I statement. can't get it up. I mean, if you're having that amount of meth where you have your own meth spoon, probably. Your silicone <laughs> penis budget is out of control. It really is. We got to get that under control, man. Throughout the near uh, throughout the near hour, uh, officers tried to get Weber out of the car. She was making nonsensical statements and continued to masturbate, according to the document. Scout Master Multiple- Lewis, no! 
Jesus. <laughs> uh, multiple 911 calls came in on the afternoon of May 9th concerning a naked female walking around and jumping in and out of vehicles at a retail business that sells motor vehicles. That's my fetish. In Mankato, about 81 miles southwest of Minneapolis, according to the document. Weber was brought to a detoxification facility after authorities finally convinced her to exit the car, the owner of which did not give Weber the go-ahead to enter. Go jerk off in a Petri dish. So there you go. Don't go around car. Don't get high on drugs and go around cars and start masturbating. <laughs> just don't do anything this woman just was described doing. This is all bad. Yeah, everything she did was, was probably not good. So uh, okay, just aside from the fact that she's just running around masturbating in front of everybody, yeah, like nonstop and high on fuck on drugs, just, just um, constantly. Right. She is still performing sexual acts in front of people that are not consenting to be party to yes. this. Yes. They do not want this. They don't want to be a part of what this like fuck show she's got going on, apparently. Yeah. You know, no one. They didn't ask for that at all. Had she wanted to do this and people were like, yeah, just sit over here and go for it. You know, like then that's fine. You know? Yeah. <laughs> that's OK. But that's. <laughs> Not what anybody wanted. No, <laughs> what she is literally doing is a sexual assault because she is masturbating in front of people and forcing them to witness it. Yeah, and they're like, Why? they don't want to be a part of this. <laughs> <laughs> no, not in any way, shape, or form. So this type of behavior, while we can have a little bit of fun joking around about how insane this type of activity is yeah this is inappropriate in multiple ways and highly illegal for multiple reasons you just don't fucking do that yeah you don't <laughs> don't do that and, and don't fuck horses just saying <laughs> right i don't know a horse can't give consent Stop fucking them. <laughs> yes, and absolutely get consent before you whip out your piece and start beating it like mad in front of someone else. Like me? <laughs> Just people in Fuck. general should make sure they do that. Get yeah, consent Yeah, I mean, first. I don't do that at all. I, I, I don't even like bringing it out. It should, should not be out. It's, it's best to be kept where it is. And on that note, we're going to end the show. <laughs> if you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcasts, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Mental Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick 6 Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which vs. the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com com itunes spotify stitcher youtube and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found
about is Satan's ice cream truck from Strapping Young Lad. What the fuck was that? (laughs) It is Satan's ice cream truck from Strapping Young Lad, for those of you that are listening in on the Pirate Radio edit. (laughs) You'd like to find other other instances where I've included Strapping Young Lad music on the show. That's available in legionpodcast.com forward slash cinema dash psyops. As far as I understand it, that is the archive that has every past episode of the show available there. I haven't double checked it as of recently, so if you're having trouble locating an episode that it doesn't exist back then i don't know maybe i'll have to make a share folder or some shit we're also available to share our memes to you via cinema underscore psyops on instagram and by memes Uh, and ours i mean the ones that i stolen for our people they're not stolen they're repurposed (laughs) those are also shared to our facebook group cinema psyops which some of you may have or may have not noticed is now on post accept where I have to go in and accept every single post now and review it because of what you animals have been posting in that group. You, Are you which, kidding me? No, look what you made me do. Look what you made him do. No, actually, look what Facebook made me do. That's like, yeah. they're just like, no, you have to approve everything now. You got to get this group under control. I'm like, Jesus, what the fuck? What but anyway, we, what, that's Cinema PsyOps on Facebook groups. This is what you people are doing to us. What the hell? What are we? What are we? What are they doing? Killing fucking Girl Scouts or something? We're not that bad. I don't know, but it's fucking insane what is happening to that group on Facebook of Cinema PsyOps. I'm available there as Court PsyOps. You can get a hold of me in some way, shape, or form. And Matt exists in a way that you can tag him in stuff that he will never respond to as Matt PsyOps there on Facebook. 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 You can also email feedback to Matt PsyOps, Matt at gmail.com, which he will definitely not respond because I don't even think he knows that email exists anymore. I definitely know it exists. You can email feedback to court who will more than likely get back to you cinema psyops court at gmail.com i am definitely more likely to get back to you you can also tweet a couple of tweets on the hate-filled shit fest that has been reformed into a porn bot heaven known as twitter i am at court underscore psyop there and he is at psyop matt do you tweets at all anymore ever at- i read tweets but i don't i i've never been a big tweeter <laughs> if by read tweets you mean you look at the photos of the naked boobs yeah <laughs> That's reading a tweet. What the fuck are we talking about here? <laughs> I don't know, but while you're out there reading those tweets the way that Matt Psyop reads those tweets, if you know what I mean, <laughs> and I think you do, kick the fuck out of this week and make it your bitch. While you're out there reading those tweets the way that Matt Psyop reads those tweets, if you know what I mean, and I think you do, kick the fuck out of this week and make it your bitch. Oh, I didn't have anything else. I gotta find a way to I gotta find a new way to end that show, man. <laughs> Something. Right. Jesus. All right. I am stopped recording. <laughs>